Boys homies, your boy Blasphemous Asia D here. You see the gameplay in the background. You already know what time it is. Pedro, quick, hit off the noise zone. Oh, oh, like one or two animals away. I was close. <laughs> Haters. But, <laughs> without further ado, I like to call this story the legend of the craziest hotel party I've ever been to and the Jamila kick. It was my best friend's birthday party. We're gonna call her Jam. You know, we meet up in the hotel lobby, man. We're walking around, man. We're laughing, we're joking, we're bullshit. You know, because it's her birthday. Then we go up to her room. There's a lot of people. They got drinks. They got music. You know, they got a really, really nice environment. We're all up there, man. And, you know, we're laughing, we're joking. We're all really, really freaking silly people. I don't partake in any drugs and or alcoholic beverages. I've only been drunk once, and I'm ready to complete ass of myself. Don't worry, I'll tell you all that in a different story time. Andre gets just... Shit face drunk. Not to the point where he's throwing up, but to the point where he doesn't really know where shit is. <laughs> Andre's sitting on the bed, and my friend Jamila, she's standing up and she's talking to Andre in a really energetic manner, you know, because they're boyfriend and girlfriend, right? So they're talking, and Jamila's laughing and joking and shit, and Andre's just laying on the bed, man. He's just chilling. He's not saying shit, he's not doing shit. Me, I have this running joke where I tend to like fake plump other people's girlfriends has gotten me in a considerable amount of trouble. This shit's funny as hell. I run up behind Jamila in a way as to which Jamila doesn't know I'm in back of her, right? I start like humping behind her. From Andre's point of view, you can't tell that my penis is not directly on his girlfriend's backside. You know, just being a deuce bag. It's, it's funny to me. Andre's just sitting down, man, and I see his eyes get a little bit wider when I start doing the face expression with it, like, yeah. Yeah, I'm making like I'm cuffing her butt with both my hands and stuff. I'm like, yeah, baby, I got your girlfriend, dog. What you gonna do, baby? <laughs> no bullshit, no bullshit. Andre, and if you if you blinked, you would have missed it. And I can't make this shit up. <laughs> A little bit of backstory on, on Andre. He is one of the most docile people I have ever met in my life. He is also one of the most intellectually brilliant people I've ever met. Like, there's a test online that only 1% of the population can actually pass. This motherfucker sat down and did that shit in like 15 minutes. No bullshit. Grabbed a piece of paper, a pencil, and did that shit 15 minutes fucking flat. Just fucking brilliant. Based on everything I know about him, I was expecting him to lay there and take it. I got your woman's ass cheeks in my fucking hand. You ain't gonna do shit. <laughs> so, and again, I cannot make this shit up. Upon seeing this, Andre gets up off the bed, rears his head back, screams out, get the fuck off of Jamila. Pushes Jamila out of the way, leaps into the air like five feet, and does this crazy crescent spinning roundhouse fucking kick aimed directly at my fucking face. Now this is where the liquor apparently comes into play because the kick passes a couple of inches in front of my freaking face and lands squarely into Jamila's arm with the fucking thud crack. <laughs> For like it was a millisecond where she just looks confused. And then apparently the pain set in. I will never forget the words that came out of Jamila's mouth. She looks at Andre with like this sad puppy dog look on her face. That wasn't even like, I hate you. It was just like, but I love you. Why would you do this to me? She's holding her on. She screams out, why would you do that? And bursts into tears and falls on the fucking ground, man. <laughs> now, I've got an executive decision to make because this shit was hilarious. But, but, I'm still somewhat afraid for my life. In my mind, I remember thinking a couple of different thoughts. Like, the thug side of me is like, yo, Maurice, what the fuck are you doing, baby? You a comedian? Laugh! This is a 115% situational comedy. What the fuck are you doing, baby? Get in there and make jokes. The rational side of me is like, you're gonna sound angelic now. Maurice, you just narrowly escaped a thorough fucking up. Are you satisfied with those life scenes you just saw? Because that's gonna be it. He's gonna kill you if you laugh at his girlfriend who's on the ground crying right now. Well, especially when he's the one who did it. The comedian side of me is like, yo, Maurice, dude, son, get your bitch ass in there and make jokes. I 
do is I'm told and I instantly lay into Andre. <laughs> like, man, that that is fucked up, man. All she did was love you. <laughs> He's like, Maurice, fuck you, man. I was trying to kick you. You had your dick on her. You were fucking trying to cut her butt cheeks. I'm like, I never had my penis on your girlfriend, bro. I was just joking around. But you just kicked the shit out of your fucking girlfriend, huh? Good job, Ike. Because, you know, from Ike and Tina Turner from back in the day, he was the original uh, woman beater. Kick the fuck out of her, you know? So his girlfriend is laying on the ground, crying her eyes out. But she's such a comedian as well, she can't help but laugh at how stupid the situation was. So she's a blubbering mess, but she's also laughing in between her spurts of tears and snap bubbles. It was fucking hilarious, man. Till this day, every time I see this dude, I'm like, get the fuck away from Jamila. <laughs> and I make like, I tell everyone he comes into contact with the legend of the Jamila kick and how he beat the fuck out of his girlfriend on her birthday. The party gets crazier than that. There was another homeboy that we came with. We gonna call him Will. He's there. He's one of the coolest light-skinned cats I know, man. He plays pool real well. He makes really funny offhand jokes. We down at the club. We laugh. We have some fun. The homie Will, this nigga is drinking his ass off, man. By the time we get back up to Jamila's hotel room to finish the rest of the birthday party, he is completely fucking slizzard. Also, the homeboy Ralph, one of the coolest Asian motherfuckers you will ever meet in your life. Cool as shit. What's funny is not only is he cool as shit, but he is also very technologically savvy because he's Asian. So, <laughs> so we all back up at the party, man. And by this time, you know it's late at night. Everybody's either passed out or they they they've gone home. Now another person that's up at the party is the homie. We're gonna call him Jose. Jose is cool as all shit, but he's extremely docile. That shit comes into play in a very negative way later on in the fucking story. I was Will's ride. Now, unbeknownst to me, if he gets drunk enough, completely forgets the English language and turns French. Sp split personality disorder. Did not fucking know this shit. He turns into who I like to call Francois. <laughs> Jamila, Andre, they're cutting up in the bed. This nigga, he falls asleep on the bottom of the bed. Me and Ralph, we're, we're just up, we're laughing and joking about everything that ended, that's gone on that night. You know, Jamila's arm is fucked up. She couldn't use her arm for like three fucking days because Andre beat the fuck out of her <laughs> when he kicked her. <laughs> Jose, he's passed out on the couch, man. He sleep like stomach first. So his butt's up in the air. This nigga's face down in the pillow. I wake up Will because it's time for us to go. When I'm finally able to get Will up, he is noticeably Francois now. The first thing he says out of his mouth is, Que? Por es? Cas? Fuzis? Frustasi? Felicimos? Now, mind you, I, do, I know no French at all. I'm just gonna paraphrase in fucking gibberish. <laughs> and I'm like, the fuck are you talking about? And he points towards the couch. He's like, who's this? Who's this? Who's this? Flolisimos. And I'm like, dude, I, I don't know what the fuck you're saying, man. Now, apparently he can understand English. He just can't speak the shit. So he gets up. He goes over by the couch. He reaches down, picks up his backpack. He starts ruffling through it. And he looks up. And he gets this malevolent ass fucking grin on his face. And he turns around. And he looks at us and he's like, God says me, mo, me or Mahimos. He takes a step closer to us and he's like, uh, me amos Mahimos. And we're like, what the fuck are you talking about? And then he points to his wrist and he's like, me los, me los, los Mahimos. You know, oh, oh, your watch. Oh, your fucking watch. Oh, we, we don't know where your watch is. And he gets super close up on me like he was going to kiss me. And he does this super fucking crazy grin like he was going to punch me in my face. Like, no bullshit. And he's got his fist ball. I see out the corner of my eye that Ralph, his eyes are wide as fucking light bulbs, man. Because Ralph, he's not with none of this crazy, you know, people fight type shit. He's a super cool dude. No, no negativity goes on around this guy. So he, so he takes a step back, he's like, what the hell, man? This dude, just be cool, be cool. Unfortunately for me, man, my reflexes kick in a little bit, and I push him like hella hard. I'm like, 
do. Like, you know, I don't say nothing mean to him. I'm like, I'm like man, you, you know, you, you too close. You know, because I mean, I feel like he's about to hit me or something. You know, I got to bridge some distance. And he falls back, he trips over something, and he gets up. Guess what he trips over? His fucking watch. So he reaches down, picks up his watch. He instantly gets a big smile on his face. He's like, Felicimos! Blah, 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 blah. French words. French words. <laughs> <laughs> so he picks up his watch, man. He puts it on. He's like, he's like, horses, moose, moss, he my pies. And he puts on. I really gotta learn some first. He starts wobbling towards where Jose is sleeping, ass in the air on the couch, right? And he's wobbling over there like he's super sleepy. And he's like, eh, uh, me sleepy time. He puts his head in his hands like a pillow. And he jumps and lands on Pedro's ass, penis first. <laughs> the minute, and I'm talking the minute, Will's penis made contact with Jose's ass, his eyes shot open, got wide as fuck with the quickness, but he didn't do anything. He didn't push him off. He didn't try to get away. He just looked at us. In his helpless look, with his eyes super wide, as if to say, Oh God, please help me. <laughs> it's like his eyes were reaching out at us for help. <laughs> of course, me and Ralph, we start fucking dying laughing, man. This is the funniest shit I've ever seen in my life. And his eyes are like, Please, there's a dick in my butt. Help! Mind you, we laugh for a good minute and a half. Jose still is not moving, but his eyes are still super wide. And he's starting to like, trying to shake him off of his butt. <laughs> we finally go over, man, you know, and we drag Will out of Jose's butt. <laughs> I can't believe he just laid there and let it happen. <laughs> he didn't even put up a fight, like really? He just gave up, like, well, you know, well, I you know, guess I'm getting ready. I'm telling Will, I'm like, yo, man, you know, it's time to go. It's like 3 o'clock in the morning. And it takes about 4 or 5 minutes for me to finally get him woken up enough as to where he's coherent. But he still doesn't know any freaking English. So we leave, and we're walking down the fucking hotel hallway, man. This is the most horrifying part of the story, if you're still with me. And as if on cue, when we're walking past this door, it fucking shoots open, right? And these two unattractive, overweight chicks, they're noticeably fucking drunk. They stagger out, they're like, woo, woo, party, party, woo. And one of the girls lurches forward, and she starts rubbing Ralph on his arm. She's like, ooh, oh, you guys want to come in here and party with us? And me and Ralph, we look at each other. We, we know what to do, okay? First of all, these bitches are ugly, all right? Anyone out there who doesn't know, we as men tend to rate women from one to ten. These women were noticeably one and a halfs. I look into this party that they're telling us to go into because, you know, behind them we can see into the room a whole bunch of older looking gentlemen, nearly all of them are bald, all in there sweating profusely and dancing to bad music. This does not look like the party that I want to end my night on. So me and Ralph, we look at each other and we can tell from our facial expressions we come to the same conclusion. We're like, um... No, that's okay. We kind of have some other stuff we got to do, you know. We're, all, we're already partied out, you know. Thanks for the invitation, though. Apparently, Will did not get our look because he goes running into the party. He's like, Fuez Samal is a bit and runs into the fucking party. He squeezes in between the two fat chicks straight to the back of the fucking room. And I'm mortified. We don't know any of these people. The chicks. They look at us, and they're like, hey, come on, guys, come on, have some fun with us, yeah, woo, come on in, guys, yeah, the party's nice. I guess the girls noticed that we weren't down. These guys told me they don't like they want to party with us. I know what'll change their minds, though, and no bullshit, we're in the middle of the hallway, man. Both these chicks reach down and pull up their shirts to the sky. To the point where you couldn't even see us and expose their cow udders. Luckily enough, the chicks did pull the shirts up over their faces because they couldn't see the expressions 
on me and Ralph's faces, man. We're like, oh, god damn it, man. <laughs> As if I needed anything else to compound on this already creepy night. It's for you buffalo looking bitches. Like to show me your National Geographic orangutan titties. I was, I was pissed. Ralph takes a couple steps back. <laughs> towards the air and he starts saying like whoa 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 <laughs> whoa whoa <laughs> and uh it's funny because the girls i guess they noticed that their boobs weren't helping the situation at all man they weren't wearing bras they were completely yolo man it 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 was it was bad <laughs> <laughs> so the girls, you know, they, they put their shirts down and they're like, they look at each other like, oh, you're lost. Turn around and dance back into the party. Woo! Woo, yeah! One of us has got to go into this party and fucking get Will, man. I'm just riding home, you know, I'm, I'm like, man, <laughs> I'm like, man, fuck it. I'm going to the party, man. There's a, it's a whole bunch of fucking sweaty, creepy looking people. I'm pushing through people, man, and when I get to the back, fucking Will is sitting there like a fucking king on his throne with two different buffalo-looking bitches, and he's telling the story in French. And the ugly chicks, they're like into it, you know, because they're ugly. They're not doing anything else. They're ugly. I'm like, I'm like, dog, dog, you gotta, come on, man, you, you gotta go. And that's when I notice one of the chicks, she looks stronger than I do. I'll just put it that way. She steps forward, she's like, hold on, Poppy. He is his own man, and he is going home with me tonight. Now, I had another executive decision to make, YouTube. My friend had noticeably pissed me off with all of this extracurricular bullshit he's been pulling on this night. I could have let him take the banging from the tranny. All right, I could have let him take it from the back, YouTube, but I'm a better person than that, okay? I I would feel bad. It would be, it would make for an awesome BHD story time for you guys. No, we, we, we have to go. I'm his ride. He doesn't have another ride home. She's like, oh no, that's okay. I'll take him home. And I'm like, um, hey Will, man, so, you know, how did your STD scare from Planned Parenthood go? Oh, what? Oh, hell no. She turns around and fucking storms off. Two of the other sea donkey looking chicks on his right, he's trying to holler at them now. So I take his fucking hand, I'm like, I, I, I just grab him by the shoulders, man, and I push him out the fucking party, man. And this douchebag, man, I didn't know exactly where he lived at, and he lived clear across town, is trying to direct me in French to IHOP because he wanted food. I'm like, God, just let me drop you off at home, man, please, just, you know. So he's like, oh, he's bole o copeta. So he crosses his fucking hands and finally points me in the fucking right direction of his damn house. Okay, it took me three and a half hours to get this deuce back to his house. <laughs> so, that's it for today's story time. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to comment. Let me know you love me. Leave me a favorite. And if you already haven't, make sure to subscribe because my content is the shit and you already more than like you more than likely already know this if you heard this story all my story times are really messed up and with that bhd up out of this bitch twizzles you can't see me but i'm doing the scissors with my hands twizzles like snip like just <laughs>